Well, hello, this is Peter Combs from P.L. Combs Asian Art and Bitamount.com in Gloucester, Massachusetts. And today is Friday, December 8, 2017. And as always, we'll take a look at last week's eBay auction results for Chinese art and go over a few other things that have gone on this week that you might want to check out. Um, uh, let's see here. We're going to start first. I, oh, I wanted to mention this. We, last week for fun, on the uh, on the newsletter page, we added an extra. If you go over to the newsletter page and check it, you'll see it. Um, we added a category onto the site a couple of pages last week just for the fun of it. Um, we posted them here to bring your draw your attention, but they're also available. You can get to these pages from clicking antique shop and auctions. Okay, and uh, what we did was we used some of the filters and searches we've devised and created this page. And uh, if you come over here, you have ant antiques. This is non-Asian antiques because a lot of you buy more than Asian art, believe it or not. So there are people out there actually buy European decorative art and American decorative art and carpets and so forth. So we created a, an area here. This is antiques by category, um, like, uh, like this. Uh, the hammers indicate auctions. The dollar signs indicate uh, fixed price items. And then the uh, next page um, off that link is this. These are scrolling boxes that we set up on RSS feeds by category. And we've got carpets and we put in some, we know quite a bit about Persian rugs and European decorative art. So we included some, some nice looking clocks we've, we've pulled up that they'll search and replace as they sell. Some very decent paintings, some artwork. Um, more uh, antiques and accessories, sort of a, miss, a mix of um, uh, uh, French and uh, European porcelain and so forth. And you might find the page sort of handy to get into. It gets it does separate out a lot of the crud that's on uh, eBay that you probably don't want to look at. The other thing we did last week, in case you missed it, was we did this. We did the uh, uh, an auction review for the Christie sale from Hong in Hong Kong in late November. It was a pretty good uh, series of sales. They had a couple of notable flops, but including the cover lot of a lot of one of their catalogs. But overall, it was a very good result. And um, uh, you'll 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 the video I think is about 25 minutes long. It's fairly long because we covered a lot of the pieces. Uh, there were so many things to pick from. They had nine catalogs. It was crazy. So uh, you can go over there and. Uh, here on YouTube and take a look at that after you finish here. All right, and uh, now let's get over to uh, the auctions uh, on eBay last week. Uh, this was a uh, very, very nice plate, Tong Shi period, put up by Ching period. He had a number of good things up. We're going to go through a few of them. This was a very pretty plate, blue enamel uh, ground with other uh, colored blue enamels and turquoise. Nice gilt rim on this plate, and uh, it did very well. It had 48 bids. It went for $2,000. But it was a quite an attractive plate and uh, not at all surprised. And the next item he had up was this, this really attractive uh, Yong Chen or maybe early, early Chin Lung uh, wide, uh, wide bowl, beautifully decorated, done, done sort of in the Ming style around the outside and the inside, the way they did the flowers and the vines. Had that sort of, if you've seen them before, that sort of oddball square uh, mark on the bottom with the swirl accused, I call them. Uh, don't, they don't really mean much, but uh, uh, the plate did very well. The bowl did very well. It brought $3,045. Uh, Ching period gets good things. He's a good picker. And, and interesting, I wanted to point this out. He had this up. It was a nice-looking uh, tea caddy, uh, Kangxi period with the lid. It didn't make its reserve. He had a res pretty high reserve on it. I was surprised, $1,625. But just as a heads up, if you see something on here and it doesn't make its reserve, more and more you're going to see more and more dealers putting reserves on things. And um, hey, kids, grandkids just came in. And um, if you see things like this and they don't sell, then uh, simply uh, maybe contact the buy the seller if you're still interested and see if uh, they, they might not want to sell it to you anyway. Um, they can put it up as a buy it now, and um, uh, you can you can pick it up at your leisure. All right. And then there was this this nice looking. This one a seller in Paris had these up. Very attractive pair of Wan Li or late Ming uh, jars, but it's a matched pair, and they're rather attractive, somewhat provincial, and uh, uh, but nicely done, nice looking foot rims on them, creamy, sort of that oatmeal color with little speckles. Uh, the bodies, I wanted to show you, had some iron oxide spots popping through the glaze. Not unusual for these. And the pair went, I think, fairly reasonably, $1,425 for the two. 
Uh, not a bad deal. This was an art fan auction in Paris. Art fan auction was the sell around those. And then there was this. This was nice looking uh, 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 late Yong Chen, early Chin Lung plate uh, with a spotted deer pattern. Uh, this is a very popular pattern. It was almost a stock pattern in some ways. Often you'll see it without the deer. You'll just see the flowers and the rocky outcroppings with no deer, or you'll see it with the spotted deer. This had them, and it was in, it was in very nice condition. Here's a picture of the back, and uh, we'll flip it over and see how it did. It went reasonably. It only went for $207. This was coming from Arthur Potts over in the UK. Uh, pretty, pretty reasonable buy, I think. Nice looking piece. And uh, this was that book. If, if you haven't gotten it and Christmas is coming, uh, this sold. It actually sold for almost twice what they sold for originally. If you scout around maybe on Amazon or ABE Books, you might find a copy. Um, uh, maybe ask your uh, spouse or, or better half to give you, one for, give you a copy for Christmas if you don't have it. It's got some spectacular illustrations in it of things that Eskenazi, this is the, the, uh, from Giuseppe Eskenazi. I just assumed most of you know. It's called The Deal, A Dealer's Hand. And it's full of anecdotal stories, interesting stories about his career um, and uh, illustrations of examples of things he sold that he discusses in the book. And uh, it's a fun read. It's a good read and lots of, a lot of good material. And the book did pretty well. It brought $181. Uh, that, that book originally, I think, sold for about 80 or 90 I got a copy um, for actually for Christmas uh, several years ago when it first came out. And uh, I've enjoyed it. It's a good book. And uh, then there was this bowl. This was a, a pretty nice bowl. It has a Yong Chen mark on it. I'm not sure it's Yong Chen, but beautifully done and clearly 18th century. And uh, a very nice decoration on it. And uh, it did extremely well. It brought $3,683. But it was in beautiful condition. It had no hairlines, no cracks, no restoration. And uh, it was a good size. As I recall, it was around seven or eight inches in diameter. Uh, but a really attractive bowl. Okay, with a mark. They, sometimes the, the, the buyers these days, and especially in China, will buy things with marks on them, even if they're slightly out of period, for fairly good money. Then there was this this uh, very interesting uh, pot, uh, 18th century blue and white pot, um, sort of reminiscent uh, of later. I, I've seen. I think. I think it's Meissen. You sometimes see them done this way. This was a nice one, and uh, it, this was a, 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 a. Well, no, this is a 19th century pot. I take that back judging by that foot, but it's really well decorated and has a Kangxi mark on it. It's not Kangxi, uh, but beautifully done. And uh, it ended up selling for $676, which is a pretty reasonable price for that. All right. And uh, then we have this. This was big. This was a uh, Femi Ver, obviously, uh, Kangxi style uh, mallet vase. This was big though, it was uh, just a hair under two feet tall, it was about 22, 23 inches tall, very large, and uh, it sold for about $100 an inch, uh, $2,550, but a nice big, uh, nice big pot, uh, Clay and Brush in, uh, in Italy had this up, uh, he's been getting better and better things, he's got some nice things over there, and uh, we do try to keep track of them. And uh, then moving along to this is the Famille Rose uh, uh, Yongchen period uh, uh, teapot. Nicely done, slightly bombayed formed. Had a repair here to the handle or hairline, which held it back. But it's a nice type and a well-known type with the flowers and the birds on it. Thought it was a pretty attractive looking thing. And uh, it went very reasonably, $228. Uh, it was from a, a seller down in Georgia, Norcross, Georgia, Great Antiques 12. You get some good things um, from time to time. And uh, then there was this Ming bowl. This was really a nice looking, uh, probably Wan Li bowl. It's got an, uh, obviously an earlier Ming mark on it. It's not, it's got like a Chen Hua mark on it. It had a significant hairline through it. And I suspect the buyer that got this is gonna plop this bowl into a, into a vat with 35% a hydrogen peroxide and bleach out that line. And uh, it'll basically just disappear. But uh, anyway, it's a nice looking bowl, and uh, it did pretty well. It brought $404, which isn't, isn't a bad price uh, these days for a Wan Lee bowl with a, a, a rather big um, uh, hairline in it. I was curious to see how that did. And then there was this. This was something I, I thought was pretty terrific. <clears throat> Transitional period um, square bottle. Um, these were originally made uh, in the early uh, 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 1500s, uh, many of them were made for the Portuguese market, 
who were the first, uh, as you probably know, the Portuguese were the first to make inroads into, into China for the trade period around 1510. And uh, they've, there are bottles that have been uncovered that look like this. And they continued making them. And they later made them in Japan as well. But this was a nice Chinese example. And uh, here's a picture of the bottom of it, very pretty. And it uh, did pretty well, $1,391. But I think that was a real, I think overall that was a very good purchase. And certainly didn't overpay for it. Uh, sort of a, a well-known type, and it was early, uh, probably, uh, probably uh, you know, transitional. And then there was this, a, a nice Daewa Blanc de Chine incense burner, done like those Ming bronze one, examples you, you see all the time. This was a good one, though. Nice looking. Here's a picture of the bottom. It's exactly how the, the raw paste showing. There it is. Nice looking example. Uh, good masks, uh, well glazed. And uh, it did quite well. It brought $1,301. Um, as I said last week, uh, or I said in the, actually in the Christie's video, uh, doing the review, that Blanc de Chine is getting some traction in China these days. And, that, and then here's the bronze version of that same pot. I, I, didn't mean, I didn't intend to put them side by side, but I did. Uh, this was a nice late Ming, early Qing, uh, very well-known type uh, incense burner with the lion, uh, the Fu Lion masks, uh, handles on the ends. This is a nicely, nicely done um, masks, by the way, on this. Some are better than others. This is well done. The uh, outer mane is nice and full, and the, uh, the, uh, de the, the detailing of the head is well done. Nice broad nose on it, all proportional to the piece. Good looking example. And uh, it did pretty well. It brought $1,741. Um, those, those, these things have come a long way. Uh, back in the, in the 80s, you could pick these up for under $100 in a lot of places. And then there's this. This was rather attractive. I, I couldn't figure out what the scene was exactly. I suppose you can if you're going to do some homework. You want to look it up, but um, it's a, a very attractive, uh, probably Yong Chen Famille Rose plate with uh, four figures. There's a man who he's either fallen or has been knocked down by the soldier there. Some sort of confrontation, but uh, interesting scene. And then in the outer border, in these, in these, this is sort of curious. They have these fan-shaped cartouches running around it with additional figures in it, and I suspect it's a story that ties all together. So if if you bought it, go look it up. Maybe let us know, and we'll we'll talk about it. At any rate, the plate went really reasonably. Um, it's been restored, but it went for two hundred and thirty dollars. But a very interesting plate of of its kind. And it went for 230, um, uh, which isn't a, wasn't a terrible buy. It came from a seller in Australia had it. And then there was this uh, rather pretty, uh, sort of not quite apple green, but nice green uh, jade uh, graduated bead necklace uh, in, in a case, but a very nice looking uh, set of beads. I hope somebody bought this for their wife for Christmas. Uh, very, very pretty. And uh, it didn't go for the world either. It only brought $1,073 which is very reasonable for a nice looking string of uh, jade beads. Not bad at all. And uh, then over here was this uh, transitional pot with the aubergine fish on it. Uh, there was a lot of interest in this. This was quite an attractive pot. Here's the bottom of it. There's the fish. It had a tiny bit of what looks like enamel loss here and there, which is pretty typical, especially with those aubergine enamels and with the red overglaze. Uh, but this was a good looking jar. It was around 12 inches tall, as I recall. And it did just fine. It brought $3,803. Not bad at all. Absolutely fine. And then last was this. I don't know if anybody knows. Normally you see these hat fobs go up, and they do them one by one. And this guy had uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of them. And uh, he put them up as a set. <laughs> and uh, look at the price. They brought $4,045, um, which is probably about right because if you've seen these sell individually they typically sell for around you know 450 to 650 dollars a piece in that price range so 4045 and you get them all all right and there's a rather so a couple of nice cobalt ones there there's a nice gilded one gold gold glass there and a uh, good looking good looking thing all righty and um i think that about covers it for the week and uh, if you're not a subscriber yet, come over to bitamount.com and sign up for the weekly newsletter. It's entirely free. And uh, subscribe to us here on YouTube. And we, as, I, uh, we, as many of you know, we do, we do at least one video a week. Some weeks we do two if there's been an auction or something interesting. All right. And uh, thanks so much for visiting. And have a great weekend. And uh, we'll see you next week.
Thanks so much. Have a great week. Bye-bye.